What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be reviewing and debriefing the Port Adelaide game. So let's just do it. Before we jump straight into it, be sure to follow me on all my social media accounts, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. They're all Swoop Luke, all nice and easy. If you are a new Swooper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. If you are a returning Swooper, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining us. The draw will be at the end of the video, so stick around, watch the debrief, and at the end, we'll see who wins the Collingwood jersey. Home, clash, away, whatever you want. So let's debrief. So on Friday night, the Pies took on the power at Marvel Stadium. It was supposed to be up in Adelaide, but we know lockdowns, etc., etc., etc. It was played at Marvel. We didn't expect a lot going in. Uh, nine players under 21, a handful of players um, under 10 games, the Baby Pies. We were dubbed the Baby Pies by all the supporters across social media accounts. Um, and look, when it's a game like this, when you've had a season like we've had, you you kind of not expect the worst, but you don't expect to go out and win these sort of games, especially Port. They're pushing for a top four um, spot. And like you guys were saying on the latest episode of Squawk with Swoop, this this kind of loss was easier to take than, say, the Carlton loss or, you know, the Brisbane loss at the start of the year or even the Port Adelaide loss from earlier in the year because now you know where we stand. We're blooding the young kids. So a 28-point loss, right, and to be able to, to peg the lead, sorry, peg the uh, or Port Adelaide's lead back by, you know, around 10 points or less than 10 points at, at intervals, was good. It was good to see that the kids have fight and the future is very, very bright. Dr. Seuss right here, sign me up. Look, what I at the start, we get that fast start. I think we kicked the first two goals, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm sure it wasn't the first three goals. We kicked the first two goals. And I said it on Twitter and everyone said it as well. You can't trust Collingwood's five... Um, you can't trust Collingwood's fast starts. There was a stat someone put on Twitter. I think it was Matthew Carlson, if you're watching. Um, hopefully it's you, dude. I uh, appreciate it. Collingwood have been 0-5 and five when we've kicked the first goal this year. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was the stat. Insane, right? So you can't trust the Collingwood fast start. But look, Port Adelaide did get to like about, I think, 32 points up in front. And then we pegged it back to at least 8 points at one stage. And like I just said, that fight that the kids have... You love it. Port Adelaide only to beat us by 28 points, and they're a top four contender. I feel like they're going um, out in straight sets if they get the top four, or they're just going straight out of finals. I don't rate them highly at all. But, you know, kudos to him. Travis Spokes in his uh, 300th got the win. So uh, 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 a champion of, of the of the modern game, uh, Boke is. I'll get this out of the way now so I don't have to talk about it uh, in, in too, depth, too much depth later on. Umpiring was atrocious. They were gifted maybe from what I from from my mind, I think three of Dixon's four goals were because the umpire was just had him had a mare and hated Jordan Ruffhead that night because there was two push in the backs that weren't called that handball uh, wasn't called and both goes and kicks I'm pretty sure three or maybe two of his four goals but he did have uh, three shots at goal because of uh, three kicks that weren't paid to us. Umpires don't dictate a win or a loss. They don't have that much... Look, they, they have a lot of say, but, you know, you have to win goals. You have to uh, convert when you got the chances. My check kicked two goals, three, or something like that. Uh, three goals, three. Ollie Henry kicked two goals, three. So you got to convert the chances when they're there. You, you convert half of those. We're a little bit closer. We might go and, and win this game. But, yeah, umpires have just been shit throughout all the season and through all the teams. Look, the, the main thing to come out of this game was Pendlebury's injury, you know, that, that slight fracture in his leg, seeing him out for the rest of the season. He'll be up and running in five to six weeks. That hurts. We may have seen him as captain for the last time. I, I've always been saying that next year he won't go on as captain, but we'll stay for, you know, one or two more years. Uh, that might have been the last foray as captain, and it's, it's sad. It's sad, but... Penelbury is, someone in the comments said, he's exactly like Wolverine. He's going to bounce back and he's going to be stronger than ever. Um, he did this same sort of, actually had a worse injury 10 years ago. So he'll be fine. He'll be fine. <sighs> Sucks. You know what else is a bit weird? Cox as a, as a sub, 
I can see why maybe he was a sub, but when you got Cox for for Pendles, you know, you don't think about losing Pendles in a game, but Cox for Pendles is a bit weird. But we had enough midfielders to, to cover it. Cox deep works. Uh, the game plan suits Cox really well. With the game plan as in bomb it long and in hope. Suits Cox really well. Uh, but ultimately, it didn't really matter in the end. Look, this video is just going to be just... The future is bright. The future is bright. Ollie Henry can take a mark so well. Who would have thought after his first game? Raw. You know, a, a raw talent in his first game. He gets dropped, goes to the VFL, comes back. These last two weeks has been exceptional. What is that? Five, three, four, five goals in the last um, two weeks. He is only 187 centimeters, I think. I thought he was more 195. I thought he was tall. He plays tall. Can take a good mark. That's why we got him as our, uh, obviously, first round draft pick. Jack uh, Jack Ginnivan, Tonic, as I like to call him, showed a lot. Um, look, he was out of position. They were playing him, you know, sometimes it was he was getting possessions in the halfback or through the middle. I would have liked to have seen him just stay at home forward. Uh, it is what it is. Trey Roscoe, oh my God. Look, I was calling him, honestly, I was calling him for him to be delisted because he just wasn't showing me anything. He wasn't showing me anything in that forward line this year when he got the chance in there. But off the half back, oh my god, oh my god, what he's been able to achieve off that half back line. It lets Maynard push up, it lets uh, Noble push up onto the wing. Quain ought to have a bit more run. And, you know, Trey's, Trey's a, a good or a decent one on one um, defender as well. So, a preseason in, in the half back line, the preseason games, played the rest of the year in the half back, he'll be a great half back for us. Um, and we've, we may have uh, unearthed a hidden gem. Finlay McRae as well. Look, he went at 45% disposal efficiency, accumulates the ball like his brother does. This needs to use it a little bit better, but you can see positive signs from him, which we absolutely love, which we absolutely love. And, you know, the older brigade were getting it done as well. Grundy played a good four quarters. Um, Jack Crisp, 30 disposals, absolutely a beast. We love that, breaking tackles and, and you know, smashing through the line and stuff like that. Taylor Adams, he had a good first half. You know, 21 disposals in that first half, three clearances, nine tackles, which is incredible. And he only played 85 out of 122 minutes. So I think there was a little bit of an injury concern. He did, I think he did go down into the rooms uh, at one stage because he only had three disposals in the second, uh, sorry, the third and the fourth quarter. So there hasn't been anything to come out yet. So we don't really know, but that's what um, people are speculating. But look, our old brigade, we're getting it done helping the young guys through. And look, I feel really good about that loss. Yeah, I feel really good about that loss. And we haven't lost, by, I'm pretty sure, by over 30 this year. So look, our losses are winnable losses, if that makes sense. I don't know if that fills you with hope or it makes you a little bit sadder, but they're all winnable losses. And that's a really good thing. The rebuild is working. And you can see that the future is bright. And not to dwell on too many negatives, but there were times where we could have used the ball a lot more uh, better. Missing targets, you know, inside 50 has always been a problem for us. But even trying to hit the diagonal passes going into the middle, some of them, or maybe like 6 out of 10 times, they weren't working out. I love trying to use the corridor, right? I love, love, love it instead of this short chip kicking around. But just got to be a little bit smarter. But those things are going to happen when we've got such a young team trying to make these decisions. There was a moment where... Um, where Tonic was on the half-back, like right on the half-back line, shot it straight through the middle, I think to Taylor Adams, and he marked it, he got turned over. But ultimately, that's what you want to see if the kick is on. Sometimes it wasn't on, you know, Grundy makes a mistake going into the middle as well. These turnovers really kill you, especially when you're turning it over in the corridor, but I don't have to tell you that, you guys um, know that. But look, I feel really positive. Look, after that Carlton game, I was disappointed because we should have beaten Carlton, especially being up for 95% of, of the game. But this Port Adelaide game, I went in thinking that, you know, we could be a chance to snare it, but I just really wanted to see what the future would look like for us with all these baby pies. And I came out, yes, sad because we lost. A loss is always sad, but I came out going, we're going to be okay. The future definitely is bright. Anyway, guys, I'm about to do the draw right now, so let's do that. We'll reconvene after it, um, and we'll talk then. So I've entered in everyone's names. I'm going to hit pick a random name. 
Loading, 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 scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Who's it gonna be? Ba 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 ba! King Goma. Congratulations, my dude. Congratulations. So there you go. There's the draw. Congratulations. Uh, be sure we'll have more draws throughout the preseason, especially. I've got a lot more videos coming out. Here's a bit of a sneak peek for the next video. What? There's a bit of a sneak peek for the next video. But until then, let me know your comments below. Who is your favorite young player coming through? What more videos do you want to see me produce? Because I want to do more than reviews. I want to do more than previews. I want to give you the content that you guys deserve. I'm here to serve you guys, yeah? This is not for me. This is for you guys. History, whatever you want me to do, let me know. Deep dives, let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, like, comment, subscribe. Tay family, tay friends, tay pets. And until next time, double shackers. I'll sweep you later. Ooh la la. So you can't trust the Collingwood five goal start. Why do I keep saying five goal start? Um, watch the preview. Uh, sorry, watch the debrief. Because a sad is always um, a sad is always lost. As much they don't have much of a of a of a dictation. No, umpire.